Hi, this is Suchyadatta once again, your SST teacher and now here we are with the first chapter of geography, resources and development. When we talk of development in geography, we mean development which is occurring or which has occurred due to the resources which are available in the country and in the world. It could be the soil, it could be the forest, it could be the land, it could be forest, land, agriculture, all these things which lead to development. So, here we are starting with the terms and concepts before we actually start with the main chapter. The first is resources. What actually resources are in context of geography? Well, resources are those objects which fulfill the basic needs of the human beings. So, they have the capability, the potential of actually catering to the needs of the human beings and they should be technologically accessible, they should be economically feasible and they should be culturally acceptable. Now, what does it mean? When we explain it further, when we say technologically accessible, it should not be that a thing is found in nature which seems excellent for development, but we are not able to make it accessible by use of technology or any other means. Then it is just a waste, it is not a resource. When we say economically feasible, it should not be that when we turn out that particular material for human use, it actually works out very expensive for the masses and they are not able to assess it due to economic factor and culturally acceptable. Of course, the people should be able to accept it that is, it should not hurt their feelings in any way. So, the sentiments to be kept in mind, the money factor to be kept in mind and of course, it should be made accessible. That is the true definition of resource. Next, natural resource. Now, a natural resource as the word suggests is a resource which is available to us due to nature that is a gift of nature which is free flowing. It could be a river, a mountain or a forest that is whatever if you say basically the nature has given us, the God has given us to us that is a natural resource. Next is resource development. Now whatever is available to you how do you develop that and as it is the chapter itself says resource and development. So, resource development is in fact an exercise by which the resources are made possible in such a way that the human beings utilize it. So, the availability of natural resource when a particular exercise is done that they actually become possible for the human beings to utilize them that is resource development. Next on the availability of the resources, how actually we get these resources? On the availability, we define the resources into two categories, biotic resources and abiotic resources. Biotic resources are those which we obtain which we get from the biotic things, the living things and these could be from the plants or the animals. That is from the living things we extract certain material which is a biotic resource because we have got it from a living thing. Well, we continue with the next terms in the next clipping. While we were talking of availability of the resources, we have already discussed the biotic resource. 
we go further and talk about the abiotic resources. Now, abiotic resources are those resources, those materials which we actually obtain, we get from non-living things. Now, what are those? Those are like rocks or the mountains. From where actually we obtain certain material which we utilize for our development which actually cater to the needs of the human beings. So, on the basis of availability, you have seen two resources, biotic and abiotic. Now, on the basis of renewability, that is on the basis of exhaustibility, we divide the resources again into two, that is on the basis of exhaustibility and those are renewable resources and the non-renewable resources. First we talk about the renewable resources. The renewable resources are those resources which can be used by the human beings again and again, again and again for their use. These are called as renewable resources. Now which resources are they? It could be the forest. See. What is happening in the forest? The mangoes, the other fruits, other things from the soil are actually growing again and again. So, they are renewable. The water is renewable because we keep getting water again and again. Now, non-renewable resources. Now, these are resources which once used cannot be used again. We cannot get it again and the biggest example of it is the minerals. If we have actually utilized minerals for our basic needs, we cannot use that product again. Remember children, we divide the resources first of all into two categories that is the first category being on the basis of availability, biotic and abiotic. On the basis of availability, renewable and non-renewable resource. Then the next is individual resource. The name itself suggests that it is a resource, it is a material, a product, a building that is actually owned by an individual. It is a one-man property. Therefore, it is an individual resource. And he utilizes it the way he wants to because it belongs to him. So, next we talk about community resource that is an object, resource or a building which is available to a group or individuals that is called as community resource. It could be a well a pond, a marriage hall, a building that is a community resource because more than one people can actually make use of that resource. So, this division children is the division of what kind? Well, the division individual and community is actually the ownership, the division based on ownership of resources. So, how many type have you already seen? You have seen on the basis of availability, biotic or abiotic, you have seen on the basis of their exhaustibility, renewable and non-renewable and now you have seen on the basis of ownership that is individual and community resource. Next we talk of national resources. National resource as the word suggests is the resource of a country that is all countrymen can actually make use of those resources and the criteria is that it should lie not beyond the political boundaries or territorial water extent of that particular country. When it lies beyond that, 
it is actually not a national resource. So, we have seen what resources are, what are the different kinds of resources, but yet we have to learn more new terms and concepts which we do in the next clipping. Well, we were just talking of resources and their development and in the last clipping we spoke of the national resources. Now next that we have to see is the international resources. Let us again try and understand from the word as to what it suggests. International resources are those resources which are shared by more than one country and it is an, the international organizations which actually have the ownership of international resources because they lie beyond 200 kilometers of the economic zone that is why because whatever lies in between 200 kilometers of economic zone fall in the category of national resource. So, you have seen the difference between national and international. The first difference is that one country owns it, more than one country actually is the owner owned by the government of that country, owned by an international organization lies in between 200 kilometers of economic zone lies beyond 200 kilometers of economic zone. Next is potential resources. Well, those resources which we actually see in the nature, which are actually available to us, but will be utilized in future. We are not making use of it as on now are the potential resources. Simple which will be used in future are the potential resources. Next, developed resources. Now, those resources which have been developed for the present generation, that is we are utilizing, we are making use of it are the developed resources. Next is the stock. Stock is in fact that material which is there and which can be utilized by the human beings because we need to, but we are not able to make use of those material because of lack of technology. That is a stock. Remember the difference between a potential resource and a stock is we are not able to utilize it because of lack of technology whereas potential resources something which will be used in future. Next is contour plowing. Well, it is just the plowing which is done along the contour lines that is called as the contour plowing. Next we have resource planning. Well, resource planning. Again, let us try and understand from the word itself. It is just a systematic or arrangement or a strategy which is adopted for planned utilization of resources which are available is in fact resource planning. When we know where, how, when we have to use our resources is in fact resource planning. Next is conservation of resources. You see resources as I said are very essential for human development. So, we have to be careful when we actually use these resources. So, when it is careful utilization and management of the resources that is called conservation of resources. Next we have human made resources. Well, human being is a very intelligent being. So, he also makes resources out of his skill, out of his intelligence. 
and those resources could be a machine or a building again satisfying the basic need of the human being but made by the humans themselves is the human made resource next we have the land use pattern well the land use pattern is in fact the land utilization development which is available for a country during a given period once again the land utilization data which is available for a country during a given period is actually the land use pattern so you've seen all these terms but few of them are still left which we see in the next clipping well the next is land degradation the word suggests that the land has become of a lower quality it has degraded so when actually the land becomes unfit for human use that's called as, called as land degradation now sometimes it could be the human beings who have degraded the land sometimes it could be the natural factor there could be a flood an earthquake which actually have degraded the land or it could be utilization of land on a very severe scale leading to land degradation because excess of everything is bad next is soil now simple term what is a soil soil is in fact the uppermost layer of the earth and it has organic and unorganic materials this actually is responsible or tells us about the fertility of the soil or of the land as such so soil is just the uppermost layer of the earth next is soil erosion soil erosion means erosion the word erosion means washing away the getting out of something from there is erosion when the top soil is actually washed away that's called as soil erosion and who is responsible for soil erosion it's the agents of gradation it could be running water it could be wind which actually wash away the top soil and this causes soil erosion next is khaddar and bangar these are the kind of soils which are there khaddar and bangar khaddar is in fact new alluvium soil which is very young and is naturally very very fertile it's generally close to a river channel whereas bangar is an old alluvium soil so naturally has become less fertile and this is far away from the river channel immediately if somebody asks you the difference between a khaddar and the bangar soil this is a new alluvium soil this is an old alluvium soil since it's new it's young it is very very fertile it's become little old so it is less fertile here it is very close to the river channel it is far away it's little away from the river channel so these were the two kind of soils next is gully erosion so when we are talking of soil and its erosion one of its kind is the gully erosion and the other is the sheet erosion well gully erosion is that erosion which is caused along the steep slopes and just by rain water where is it once again revise it erosion along the steep slopes caused by river water is gully erosion whereas sheet erosion is erosion of top soil along the gentle slopes is what 
and caused by rain water is the sheet erosion. This is gully erosion is on the steep slopes and the sheet erosion is on the gentle slopes and this is just the erosion of the top soil. Both of them are caused by rain water. That is the two kind of erosions you have seen the gully erosion and the sheet erosion. Well, we will talk about it the remaining part of it in the next clipping. In the chapter, we are not only talking about the resources, its kind and the development of resources, we have also picked up soil as to what it is, the kinds of soil and also the degradation process. How does the soil become less fertile? Sometimes it might even become barren and sometimes we see that there are natural factors and human factors which lead to the soil degradation. Well, when we talk of a bad land, well the name itself is suggesting that the land is unfit for cultivation or human use. That is a bad land. A land which has lot of gullies and ravines is in fact a bad land where we cannot have any kind of cultivation. Next is leaching. Leaching is a process by which the soil is being carried away, especially the nutrients of the soil are being carried away by rain water. So, this means again the soil is becoming less fertile because whatever are the nutrients of the soil, they are being washed away, they are being carried away by rain water that is leaching. So, you have seen bad land and you have seen leaching.